from what goes on with time acceleration is every time we reach a new underworld, um, such as the national underworld 3115 BC, then what happens is there's an acceleration of time where events are happening faster than they were during the Paleolithic period. So, so if you go back into the Paleolithic consciousness, that long 100,000 year cycle, when we became um, essentially what we are now, artistic um, and spiritual human beings, then there's a big shift when history kicks in. Mm -hmm. And then in 1755, industry kicked in heavy. And in 1999, technology kicked in heavily. Yeah, each one of these is going faster and faster, and therefore the outcome is different, but the issues are the same, if that, if that makes any sense at all. Going back through these underworlds gives us a chance to see the, the kind of things that, that have occurred, and yet the outcome that is going to happen now is an entirely different issue because we're in a, a period of, ex, you know, vastly accelerated time. Well, now. the history of our planet has been manipulated and messed up in new chronicles and stories, and they actually keep us in totally darkness about the existence and spiritual knowledge of our ancestors. Um, That's right. right now, there are people on this planet who look uh, at the facts with open eyes, they are able to connect the dots and to reveal the truth about the history of Mother Earth. And you are one of those teachers. And I'd like to keep on emphasizing that we're in the mm -hmm. middle of the galactic underworld now, which is the eighth underworld. It, it, it may not turn out, you know, we can't assume from what happened in the past that the, that the situation in the Gulf is going to be, a, 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 you know, like a really a cataclysm on, on the level that occurred before. But you can assume one thing, that's how people feel about it. People are really up against their deepest fears about yeah. the actual survival of our species on this planet um, this year. And, it's, and that's why um, this year has been a very difficult year for people. A lot of people have been ill, and for a lot of people, a lot of their friends and relatives have been going through a lot, because we are going through this in a personal, in a personal way, too. Dreaming part of ourselves um, goes extinct. And then we come to day six, which would be, which would correspond to last year, or co would correspond to 2009. We, we have the birth of the global maritime civilization. And where, where as far as we know uh, from very scant remains because of the cataclysm, as far as we know, there actually was a global civilization on the earth where people lived by the sea and they were sailing around the planet on boats. And then suddenly we hit night six of the um, regional underworld and we had a huge cataclysm, which was, which was a series of fragments from a, um, a supernova that affected our solar system. Mm -hmm. And so the curious thing about this, Bianca, is why is there such a big cover up on this? Th this would also involve this, the issue of the story of Atlantis and the fall yeah. of Atlantis. It's exactly the same thing. And yet you have to ask yourself, why does everybody, you know, why, has, why have historians, anthropologists, et cetera, gone to such great lengths to not have us have our story? So, so I think this awakening of, of the um, information about ancient cultures is, is really a big deal for us right now. And um, then we have current events like the um, horrific situation in the Gulf stirring up those memories of, of loss of life and loss of species and loss of habitat that happened during the previous great cataclysms. We're in the mm -hmm. middle of the galactic underworld now, which is the eighth underworld. It, it, it may not turn out, you know, we can't assume from what happened in the past that the, that the situation in the Gulf is going to be, a, 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 you know, like a really a cataclysm on, on the level that occurred before. Mm -hmm. But you can assume one thing, that's how people feel about it. People are really up against their deepest fears yeah. about the actual survival of our species on this planet um, this year. And, it's, and that's why um, this year has been a very difficult year for people. A lot of people have been ill, and for a lot of people, a lot of their friends and relatives have been going through a lot, because we are going through this in a personal, in a personal way, too. Yeah. You just mentioned it too. Um, there has been a time when human beings have been able to communicate with nature, yeah? but something happened in our distant past that caused the loss of this uh, spiritual powers. The separation from nature and the creation of a dualist mind have been the effect of this event. There are countless reports from all over the world describing a time of catastrophe and destruction around 11,500 years ago. 
Now, the yeah. memories of our ancestors are still stored in our cells, and we can still feel the fear, as you said already. Would you share with us what caused this terrible trauma? Um, as far as the cause is concerned, and now I wrote a book in 2001 called Catastrophobia. But yeah, the focus of catastrophobia was, first of all, I, I, I came up with a pretty good description of the cataclysm and the cause. And I, but what I was mainly interested in is what did that do to our consciousness? In other words, I'm much more interested in how this affected us since mm -hmm. it's recent enough to, to, so that we actually hold this memory fairly deep at a real cellular level. So I surveyed all of the um, different theories as, as to what happened and how it happened. Mm -hmm. And I still stick by the, the theory that I selected. Now, many, many writers are, are writing about the, this cataclysm at this time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are adopting the idea that a meteor caused it, or, or um, I, I can't remember what some of the people say, but I still think the theory in catastrophobia is right. I think it was triggered by a supernova. And but but you know this, this catastrophobia is a is a relatively scientific book and so usually when you go back and and look at a book that's ten years old usually you're going to find a lot of things that you don't even agree with yourself anymore so the one big change um, that I would put into catastrophobia I'm, I'm thinking of revising it right now because um, we do have some very very good information from a um, astrophysicist Paul La Violette. Paul um, has worked with this, the same issue. He also feels that the cause of, of the cataclysm was um, coming from the, the uh, you know the, the influence of a um, supernova. But in his case, he feels that this cataclysm went on over a period of 2,500 years, and then the climax of this whole thing was 9,500 BC. And I've come around to feel that he's right. I think that this series of uh, events that happened to our planet did occur over a period of 2,500 years. So that really would be the only change that I would make. And then, then regarding time acceleration, um, this means that this whole uh, uh, effect from the um, Vela supernova, this means it started around um, 14,000 years ago. And so, of course, I was watch. See, the interesting thing about having Kalaman's theory is you can watch what's going on in the current moment to see if it resonates with the past. I noticed a huge resonation with that point um, at 14,000 years ago this year. Um, I can't remember. It. Well, I remember now. I just had to put in the hologram. We're talking about uh, January, February, March of 2010. And we just had a series of constant earthquakes on this planet. The first one... Uh, around January 15th was Haiti, and then it just continued yeah. um, more, more and more earthquakes. So we did see a resonation with that issue of 14,000 years ago. So at this point, I think we can assume that this horrific experience that our species went through uh, went, uh, went over a very, very long period of time, which makes it even worse. People may ask, why can I not remember all this if it's true that memories are still stored inside of us? But is it not so that this memory is almost inaccessible because there's just too much fear to experience these traumatic feelings again? Yeah, that's true. And that's what the, the galactic underworld is all about. In other words, the galactic underworld events, such as the earthquakes this year and then the mm -hmm. oil volcano, that's forcing everybody to remember it. But I'd like to put a really positive spin on this. The way I got into all of this issue of, of the cataclysm, well, I, I, should, I should start by saying that my grandfather um, was a Cherokee record keeper, and he was my teacher. And so when I was a child from age 3 to age uh, 17, I was in um, full-blown training with my grandfather, which was three or four weeks, you know, but basically three weekends a month because we didn't live in the same town. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather taught me all, all about the cataclysm. And he, he passed on Cherokee records uh, to me. And the basic um, belief in these records is that, that our species would have to recover the memory. Yes. And the reason we would need to recover the memory is because we got shut down. So what led me into this in the first place as an adult was as I went around as a teacher working with people, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with people. 
I mean, given the capacity that I understand that we possess, I kept asking myself, what happened? What happened? And that's what led me back into writing Catastrophobia.